All right, guys, got a boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting in the Freedom Office. And uh, in front of us, right here in front of me, is the latest and greatest of the rifle builds that I've been working on. Now, this guy right here, this is the uh, rifle that I have put together to compete with in a competition coming up called the Sniper's Unknown Challenge. Really cool organization. And we're going to be shooting down at the Government Training Institute, GTI. And it's an urban environment slash wooded, uh, depending on how far out we're going to be engaging targets. But the idea is that with this new round, the uh, six millimeter arc, which has an incredible ballistic coefficient in a small frame, has the same terminal ballistics, or if not more than a 308. And this rifle can reach out to right about 1300 yards, which is incredible for a small frame AR-15. Now, first of all, I want to just give a big old huge thanks to all the people who uh, were instrumental in helping me put this together. Uh, we'll start from the top, primary arms. I uh, actually bought the uh, spur uh, rifle mount. We also have the uh, Sendit LR uh, level system. Uh, Manning and Sons, a uh, great channel, a uh, good guy, Ethan Manning. Uh, he helps the channel out both financially and providing us with a bunch of items to review. I really, really appreciate that because he played a role in uh, providing the bolt carrier and the bolt. And then uh, along with JP Rifles, who was very instrumental, I'd also like to say thank you very much to Optics Planet uh, for they provided the handguard and the upper receiver. And uh, honestly, guys, without all these people helping, there's no possible way I could afford to put a rifle like this together. Uh, also, the guys over there at Proof Research, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then Ultradyne provided the uh, muzzle brake. Uh, B&T Atlas provided this beautiful, beautiful bipod. Uh, this is their CAL. It's uh, cant only. There's no uh, rotation on it. And then uh, also the guys over there at Trigger Tech. This is running the Trigger Tech Diamond. And believe it or not, this is the buttstock that I had on my very first rifle. I absolutely love it. And I actually put some neoprene on top of it right here. Um, Radiant Raptor, hand, uh, charging handle, and just, just an amazing rifle. Really right stuff on the pivot point here. I'm running this on a uh, inner rail carbon fiber 40 millimeter uh, tripod, which can support up to 90 pounds or 60 pounds or something like that. But it is the most stable tripod. It only weighs six pounds. And that's one of the things with this uh, Snipers Unknown Challenge, uh, we're allowed to bring one tripod, bipod, one bag. Now, I'm not sure if that's talking about this guy right here. This is a uh, not a game changer, but it is another unique item that is provided uh, by Coltac in Area 419 with the Q, uh, with not the QD, but the Arca Rail attachment. I'm also running the same thing with the Arca Rail attachment up here from Area 419 with the barrier stop. Um, yeah, this rifle we went all out on. And that's one of the reasons why I was getting really, really, oh, by the way, this is the, uh, about this up here, this is my dope card, because um, the intent is on this particular competition, I'm going to be running a dot on my pistol, which means I don't have to wear these guys right here. These are the Elvex uh, 1.0s. Uh, I can run with a clear or a pair of sunglasses, which I've got a pair of Oakleys on the way that I'm hoping to wear during this competition. But um, I put this thing up here. This is from X-Ring, uh, not the X-Ring channel, but I put it way out here so I can actually read it. I can't read anything up to here. Now, a cool thing, I'm going to turn this thing around. I'm going to show you this. If you guys haven't seen this, and I'll, I'll do a review on this guy later on, but um, right here, as you can see, that is the, uh, the send it level system. And what it does, it attaches directly to the spur mount, which saves me pick rail uh, areas up here. But as you can see, it just rolls back and forth. Now, another thing that I am going to be installing on this that I don't have, I don't have it in front of me right now, is the uh, Ultradyne has a new set of uh, backup iron sights, 45 degree. I'll be doing a review on those uh, individually. A lot of this stuff, I don't do reviews on because right now I'm, I'm more concentrated on developing a load for this thing. And that's what this, the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. It is me trying to develop a load. And that's where the disappointment was really, really kicking in. Um, and I've also got sling attachments on here because we are going to have to be going up a tower. This is going to be fun because 
I'm not exactly in my fighting shape at all, um, but uh, <laughs> they've got like 135 foot towers we're going to be shooting from elevated position. It's going to be really cool. Um, jumping off from the rifle a few bit, a little bit, Big Eddie Unlimited sent out to me the uh, SIG Kilo 3000 BDX. We're going to be doing a review on that as it relates to and how it is tethered to the uh, Kestrel. Uh, very fast system. Also, uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing is uh, talking about uh, a couple different tripods. All right, anyway, back to this story here. Um, so there's like three rounds that come from Hornady that are uh, six millimeter arc. And this video is coming on long. This is more along for the guys that are really involved in the shooting thing. So we had the ELD 107, and that has the ballistic tip. And then we had the 105 boat tail hollow points, and then they had the... Uh, uh, I guess the hunting round and uh, uh, I'm not big into the hunting rounds but because I'm looking more for accuracy and in testing one of the things we were finding is I just could not get an accurate uh, not an accurate but a consistent group with the 107 ELDs even tried reloading and even with reloading uh, really couldn't get anything that was consistent but what I noticed is when I was shooting the Hornady Black which is the boat tail hollow point the the uh, the groups were more consistent and tight. There were less flyers involved. I mean, you know, the ELDs would come up tight, but you get like one here and one here. And what that does is it kills your consistency. And in competition, if I can get one MOA or better, I'm good. I can hit targets out to a thousand yards without a problem. But what you run into is if you got two flyers, well, that's one round that could land two feet to the right of the thousand yard target. What I decided to do is I tried out a couple different rounds in reloads, the 107 as well, and it still didn't, and when I was trying to do the reloads, it still didn't work the way I wanted it to. But what I found out is I went ahead and, and just by chance, I was at uh, Bass Pro Shops and I found these uh, 105 uh, Boatail Hollow Paint Point Match. And then also at my local reloading store, I found these Burger 105. Now with each barrel in each round, there's a perfect match. You, some people are like, well, you know, mine will shoot that round, no problem. I said, that's good, I'm glad for it. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to really search for that perfect round. And just the other day, uh, I had some feeding issues, but I've got, I got that fixed. Uh, rifle was dirty as hell. Haven't cleaned this barrel out since we got it. So uh, we're gonna pull the carbon out of it and then uh, shoot it again. I've got some 15 rounds of magazines from the guys over there at ASC. They also donated magazines for this competition, both in the 25 and the 20 round mags. I like the 15 round mags because they're short, uh, they're straight, and they're stainless steel. Hold on. All right, not that this is a uh, commercial or anything, but the ASC, uh, I think, in my opinion, I like the ASC mags, but I like the stainless steel mags better. Uh, being that we might be in a position where I can put a 25 round mag in there, but there might be some times where we're going to be in a very tight position and I'm going to need something that's a little bit shorter so that I can get in there and to cramp. And that's one of the reasons why on this rifle I ran with a carbine uh, buffer tube so I can compress this rifle in as far as I can. And that's why I call this the compact sniper rifle because you are less than one MOA, and you can reach out to 1,300 yards with some tremendous terminal ballistics, and that's the cool part. Now, back to this whole thing with the 105. Uh, I tried the 110 uh, Sierra Match Kings. It looked like I hit the target with buckshot. It literally was, I was so disappointed. So in the video that you're gonna see here in a few seconds, uh, you will literally see me kissing this rifle. And the reason you're seeing me do that is because I am relieved that we've actually spent this much time, this much effort in putting together one of the most amazing advanced built rifle systems that I've ever in my history with ARs built. And we found around both the Burger and the 105s and uh, my good friend, Kenny, uh, the uh, Eagle Eye Shooting uh, channel, check him out. He suggested that I might even try going down to a 90 uh, grain uh, bullet, which I may do in the future, but we're running out of time because I got about two weeks of testing before we can actually really and truly get down to the nitty gritty because this competition is on the 23rd. Now, if you guys know me, I'm gonna push it out to the nth degree in testing just to make sure we've got everything where it needs to be. 
Um, I still got to back all these screws out here and put Loctite on them and everything else. But I will tell you this, I almost cried when we got the groups that we did because one of the things, consistency is the name of the game. I don't care if I can get under one MOA, I'm perfect. So that's it. Also, the, the clear embarrassment that I have promoted this round to the nth degree, and I just need to make sure that this thing is running the way it's supposed to be. All right, so guys, I hope you enjoy this video coming up. It's a lot of fun. We did have a slam fire on this thing, and if you're asking why I'm running, I'm just entering the uh, rounds one at a time. Uh, like I said, again, we were running into some uh, uh, mag issues, some feeding issues, which I've got to clean up. But uh, I think with these stainless steel uh, 15 rounders, we're going to end up doing a very good job on that. Plus, I was running uh, bullets that had not been cleaned. Uh, they still had the lube on them, so I'm thinking that was gumming things up. But we've got a bunch of brand new brass right here that have been trimmed. And uh, we're going to load up the burger in the 105 and then work off the test loads that we hid there. Check this video out. Here we go. You still recording? These are the 105s loaded at 29.8. These are probably going to have the velocity that we need if they work. We're getting there. It likes the 105s. All right, so <laughs> if you've uh, made it this far in the video, you know that, uh, man, when you go through testing and testing and testing and testing, your heart is in, in it, and uh, when things work out, it is awesome. And I have no doubt that my partner Rick and I are going to uh, be successful down there. I, I'm pretty sure we will be, and we're gonna do our best, and we're, gonna, we're going down there to have fun. Uh, I'm not sure how much video we're going to get down there, but uh, we're going to try as much as we can. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, this is the Combat Sniper Rifle, the CSR. I've nicknamed it. I've named it. But it is the best rifle that I have ever built, with exception to uh, like one or two others that are up into this league. But they're all really good. And I might do a video on like the, my favorite and best rifles. It'd be a lot of fun. Scuttleboy32, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. We always end them like this, support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. This is an awesome system. And I'm looking forward to running it. I'm out of here. Y'all be good. Uh...